Let's talk about the marketing plan, number six. When I think of marketing, marketing has to do with promotion, has to do with advertising, has to do with public relations, and has to do with sales. When you think about marketing and sales, or sales and marketing, you probably hear that phrase before. So the marketing plan is really about the pulling together the resources, uh, the statistics, the demographics in order to come up with a promotion plan, an advertising plan, a sales plan. It's all about how you're going to do this, who you're marketing to, your customers, and so forth. So we look at the marketing plan. There's a couple little, tiny, little, many things within it. What's the analysis like of the market that you're going after? And when I say market, that does not necessarily mean city, uh, state market. It could. It could also mean the blues market or the market it is that you're targeting. Analyze it. How do you fit into it? And think about the analysis of what's going into your marketing. Within that, what's your potential? You can look at the big potential, meaning everybody in that market, or we can start narrowing it down a little bit. What's the real potential of the market for the artist that you're representing? And break it down even further. We want to segment that market down to the nitty gritty. What's their income? What's their uh, educational background? What kind of music do they like? Do they have a certain lifestyle that goes along with that music? Now, by doing this and identifying your market, you're going to be able to come up with some goals and objectives. The analysis, the market, which we just talked about, uh, the potential market, total population of your market, your penetrated market is where you're really going, and your market segmentation, we just talked about. But then we talk about your goals and your objectives. Now, this is important. What are your goals with this? Yes, world domination, I get it. But really, look at within your market segment. Come up with some goals and then your objectives to get to those goals. And then I would recommend that you monitor this and you write it down and you uh, keep some sort of tracking. But I like the part in red, take your profit. So you do all this work, you analyze, you plan, you come up with the creative ideas, you come up with the strategy and you do your marketing and your mission. But the whole goal is to make some money and quit the day gig. 10% goes to left. That was a joke. All right, SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Okay, so here's what happens. You go to an investor to say, hey, I would like to have you, you know, take a look at my company and see if you'd be interested in investing. The investor will say, okay, sounds good. Let me see your executive summary, which we haven't talked about yet, but that's the last thing you're going to write. First thing they're going to ask for, executive summary, let me see it which is your plan within the plans, your plans within the plan. Okay, they're interested in that. They say, okay, looks good. The very next thing they're going to ask for is your SWOT analysis, which is in your marketing plan. It's one little section in your marketing plan. They want to know your strengths. They want to know your weaknesses. Threats. Once they get through the SWOT analysis, then they're going to, if they're interested, they're going to go and they're going to come back to you and say, okay, this all looks good. Let me see the rest of the plan. So that's a lot of the ways that people will do this. Some of them will go right to finances and some of them will go right to competition and so forth and so on. But your SWOT analysis is really going to be important. So I would recommend that you number them. What's your number one strength? Two, number three, number four, number five, et cetera, et cetera. What's your number one strength? If you were to pick one, songwriter, musician, collaborator, organizer, number one, what's your strength? Why are you in this business? If you don't have any strengths, then you should get out. 
Write it down. Put it in your SWOT analysis. What about your weaknesses? What's your number one weakness? I can tell you in, from the past, most people put down money. Okay. Some people put down confidence. Okay. Being prepared. Preparedness. Well, that's helping you with. Okay. So those are some weaknesses that you might want to consider. I had one student saying that he was shy. You cannot be shy in this business. Um, stage fright, I get it. Is that shyness? Maybe. But you can't be shy building up your networking and developing your relationships. You've got to be able to go up and say, hi, I'm John Ladder, I'm a producer, I'm a songwriter, and I uh, understand you're in the music industry. I'd like to talk to you a little bit. Okay? Easy. Not tough. names in the industry put their pants on one leg at a time they're just like me okay so don't be shy introduce yourself okay opportunities what opportunities are available to the, to the artist what opportunities well i have an opportunity to go on tour or i have an opportunity to get into the studio or i have an opportunity to do some co-writing i have opportunities all over the place for my art. And maybe that's through online music distribution. Maybe it's done through your management. List them. What's your number one opportunity? Okay, and what are your number one threats? Is that a threat? Well, can't play out as much. Yeah, it's a threat. Is it the number one threat? I don't think so. I never fell for it in the first place. But threats, what are your threats? Is it that you don't have a team? Is it that you are, this could be another weakness. Threat and weakness might go together. What are your threats within the industry? Do you not have the right gear? Do you not have an agent? Do you think you need a manager, but you don't? What are your threats? Okay, what's your marketing mix? And there's four, part, four Ps to this, product, price, place, and promotion. So your product, uh, the product has to do with your project, whatever project you're working on. And I like number two on there, quality, quality, quality. If you're doing outstanding quality in everything you do, you're going to draw the attention of everybody. They may not like it, but they're going to understand the quality of what you're doing product has to have this quality about it and then you have to think about the variety of the product the design the features the name the packaging any services that might go along with it okay what about price this is sometimes difficult if you're going to release a single online how much are you going to charge ten dollars At this point, do you think that maybe iTunes has established what the price is going to be? It used to be 99 cents, right, for a download? Anybody that was charging more than that was not getting it. People charging less than that were getting it, but people were thinking, well, maybe it's not as high quality. So what do you charge for a download? I think that you're going to have to go along with the uh, iTunes. Uh, However, this is what I do, and most of my clients are doing this. How about donations? Donations. So I, if you ever see a website from an artist and on there it says, our music is free, but our costs are not, please donate. That's one of my clients. <coughs> I'm finding that these clients are making more money with donations Fans will give $10 because they believe in the artist. Some will certainly take it for free. But overall, the artists that are doing donations are making more money than those that are requiring a fee. So anyway, prices on recordings. What about the price for a gig? Is a competitor 
going to knock you out of the box because your price is too high. Well, is your price too high because the quality is way up? Okay, might be worth it. Is the price high because you have an extraordinary amount of fans that are going to come and see you? I'm saying you. I'm talking about the artist. Okay. And what about the price of merch on your tables? Prices. Are you going to allow credit cards? How are you going to do this? All right. What about place? Where are you playing? Where are you performing? How are you going to get there? Are you going to have a merch table? Are you going to have your place might be your online music distribution sites? Identify them. OMDs are important to have in today's market. So are you going to be with TuneCore and Sound, SoundCloud and so forth and so on? Place is your market going to take place of your products and services. And then how are you going to promote them? Advertising, personal selling, maybe you're going to have some public relations, maybe there's a news release that's going out. We haven't gotten into promotion yet, but these are things to consider, the four Ps. All right, branding strategy. We talked about the power of your name, of the artist's name, making sure that it's one and unique. And well, that's the brand. And does the brand say quality? And then what's your strategy for branding? How are you going to grow it? How are you going to get sales out of this thing? How are your customers going to relate to the brand? How are you going to become aware? How are fans going to become aware of the brand? And I have to say that in today's market, the awareness is not the difficult part. It's the traction that the brand takes. I see a lot of new releases. And maybe it hits the charts for one week and then it's gone. There's no traction anymore. It's not building processes unless you're a superstar and you got a lot of money behind you. Something to consider. Okay, credibility. Uh, credibility. Um, I think of an artist like Pat. Yeah, a, an artist from the early 60s. He decided to come out with a heavy, heavy metal album. There went his credibility right down the drain. So you see about artists selling out, and you hear about artists doing something just for the money, or you hear one of their songs in relation to uh, an advertisement on TV. Does that cheapen the artist or not? You have to determine for yourself about credibility. Well, what's the plan for credibility and maintaining that? Someone going to look at the artist and say, hey, I believe in this artist, or what a fake. You know what I'm talking about. All right, product testing. How are you going to test your products? Are you going to take a recording? For downloads only. How are you going to test your product? A story about Bon Jovi. I used to book Bon Jovi years ago. He, he has, his recording studio is right next to a pizza parlor where he records. And he goes out with demos before they're mastered, and he plays them for some of the kids at the pizza parlor. And he gets feedback from them. Do you like this? Do you not like this? And how do you feel about this song? And does it flow well? And he gets feedback from fans before releasing. Great idea test the product a lot of artists do um performances for a select group before they go on tour they want to make sure that the set is strong they want to make sure that the flow of the concert and they test it in a live setting so how are you going to test your products your recordings your merchandise how are you going to do this and then think about how it's going to uh, flow for you with your product testing. Once again, the plan is. Okay, what's your target market and how are you going to strategize within that market? Number one, clarify the vision. 
Second, do your research, which is part of marketing. Number three, analyze and plan. Number four, initiate the plan. And number five, reflect and revise your strategy. The plan is, and then explain it here. Once again, we talked about pricing with the four Ps. If it's going to cost you, let's say you're a solo artist and you get a gig and it's going to cost you $100 in gas to get there and the gig pays $100. Bucks. Is it worth it? Maybe it is, maybe it didn't. Maybe it is because the audience is going to be your target. They're gonna, you're going to sell a lot of merch there. Maybe your audience is going to be a lot of music publishers, like if you were to go play at the, at the Bluebird down in Nashville. So maybe the cost is worth it. On the other hand, what if nobody buys any merch and you're going to play a, a gig and you're getting paid 100 bucks and you cost you $100 to get there and you broke a couple strings? You lose money. So how do you come up with a good price? What's your strategy, your marketing strategy, your business strategy? Are your customers willing to pay the price? So someone that is a talent buyer at a club has to be a customer to buy your services in the first place in order for you to sell to your fan customers tickets and merch. So in the music industry, there are two types of customers. We're going to get into this either later today or uh, next week. What's your packaging strategy? Now, the packaging can be a couple different, different ways. Uh, the first way I'd look at this is, is there a logo that goes along with the product? A logo or an image that goes along with the product. Packaging can be, in, like in this case, it looks like a CD cover. They've got the artwork on there. Is this sufficient? How many times have you been to a record store and you pick up an album because it looks good? That's packaging. It looks good, so you pick it up. If you were to see a screen with uh, multiple of artists on there, and you were to pick one, why did you pick that one? Because it looks good. Packaging. I also want you to consider packaging is also a possibility with joining up with another artist. You're packaging together for a booking. So let's go back to the winery idea. Michael, you, you spurred this in my head with your buddy. So what would happen if the talent buyer out there hires the artist to play a four-hour gig? And the artist says, well, I only got two ourselves together he'll play an hour i'll play an hour he'll play another hour i'll play another hour we're going to package the whole thing together or maybe we'll play together as an artist at the last set what's the strategy for packaging so it's not only how the products are wrapped up but how they look i know that when i package uh t-shirts i put them in a one gallon baggie so they don't get wet and they I seal them with that and then in the back of the baggie is a size and dollar amount so it might say medium and um, 10 bucks that way everything is sealed I mean I can't tell you how many times I've seen an artist's inventory of t-shirts that got mildew all over them because they didn't take care of their stuff the plan is all right, so what about online marketing? And a lot of this is going to supersede and be overshadowed by your promotion marketing or your promotion plan, your advertising plan. But I do want you to think about how you're going to be um, branding uh, the artist on your online. Um, most of this will be done through your website, I hope. But why don't you do this? On your website, have fans sign up and then obtain as much information as you can get from those fans. You know, for example, uh, what's what's their favorite band? Um, where would they come to see you? Uh, typically, what's their zip code? Able to identify those fans by zip code, so that you can market to them next time around. Uh, 
what's their email address? So what's their text number? So you can do some broad texting. These kind of information that you can obtain via your website by having a form that they fill in. And uh, I would recommend using Google Sheets and just using that uh, JavaScript going right to your Google Sheets to collect this information. That's what I do with one of my sites. It works great. Okay, how about your social media plan? Uh, where are you going to be? I, we, I brought this up earlier. When you come up with a great name for your artist, go and secure all the social media sites that you can find. Get the name of the artist, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok. I mean, I don't know. So think about where that's going to be. Put it into your plan, your social media plan. Looking on, very important part right here, marketing and evaluation. You got to figure out where you are now, measure it, and then in a month, two months, three months, go back and see how you've improved. If you do this, you'll be enthused. If you don't do this, you're going to get discouraged. So become enthused. You're growing. Your artist thing is happening. You've got an artist development plan already in place. Things are moving. Think of where you are six months ago compared to where you are now. You've thought through a lot of things. You're already advanced, if not mentally, physically. So monitoring and evaluation, very important part of your marketing. Any questions on your marketing plan?